Thank you, Lord. Luke, the 10th chapter. I'll be reading from verse 38. Luke, the 10th chapter. Hallelujah. Looks beautiful out there. Y'all ready? You got to say amen. amen. And the word of God reads from the New Living Translation. Luke, the 10th chapter, starting in verse 38. It says, As Jesus and the disciples continued on their way to Jerusalem. See, God was headed somewhere. <laughs> As he continued. Right. See, because he couldn't die outside of Jerusalem. Come on, somebody. So Christ was always making his way towards Jerusalem. Even though he was going here and there and to and fro, but he was going to always end up in his right place, which is in Jerusalem. My God. They came to a certain village. Well, a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. Her sister Mary sat at the Lord's feet, mm, listening to what he taught. But Martha was distracted. Mm. By the big dinner she was preparing, she came to Jesus and said, Lord, doesn't it seem unfair to you that my sister just sits here while I do all of the work. Mm. Tell her to come and help me. <laughs> but the Lord said to her, My dear Martha, you are worried and upset over all these details. There is only one thing. Look at your neighbor and say one thing. Jesus said there's only one thing worth being concerned about. And Mary has discovered it. Hmm. And it will not be taken away from her. Father, thank you. Thank you for an opportunity, Father God, to torment the devil. Thank you for an opportunity, Father God, also to advance your kingdom. Our Father, I pray that the people of God that's under the sound of my voice be prepared to remove, respond, and release. After tonight's word, we thank you, Father God, for household salvation in the house. We thank you for strength for the journey. We thank you, Father God, for truth. Mm -hmm. We thank you for entry. Oh, my God, you have entry into our lives, Father God, and we give you the glory. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Come on and say amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I've been wanting to preach about Mary and Martha for a long time. I could have pulled it and waited till Mother's Day, but I feel led today to talk about Mary and Martha. Come on, somebody. Amen. Somebody say amen in the place tonight. Uh, you act like y'all ready. you like, come on, Pastor, you're taking too long. Let's get going. Amen, amen, amen. I'm going to give you this. Uh, I hope you got pen and paper because I'm going to take my time and teach. I know I'm not going to finish. Like I'm not going to even try to finish because I don't want to get to talking too fast. I already talk fast as it is. So I'm going to take my time. But I believe God has some principles for you tonight. I believe God want to continue to unlock and expose so we can move deeper into purpose and deeper into advancing his kingdom. Because we all should be headed somewhere. But the key is to make sure you're headed where Christ wants you to be headed. Uh, so distraction, church, uh, does not produce a happy Balance, productive life. Being distracted does not produce a happy, well-balanced, or productive life. In fact, my God, there was a form of torture in the Middle Ages. I love this. Where they tied a man's limbs to four horses and let them loose. The French called this distraction. I'm going to read that again. There was a form of torture in the Middle Ages where they tied a man's limbs to four horses and let them loose. Hands, feet tied to four different horses, Pastor Ron, going in four different directions. See, y'all didn't catch that the first time like you did just now. Many of us tonight it's just like that man. We're going in many different directions. And the Bible says, how can two people walk together except there be some agreement? 
Oh my God, you can't mm, walk in agreement if you're going in four different directions. Come on, somebody. Mm, mm, mm. What a great picture of what is happening to our lives. Do you ever feel like you are being literally pulled apart? Is that anybody? Come on, y'all talk to me, man. Amen, because I know I do. Mm. Uh, some Christian counselors say that distractions destroy more relationships than just about anything else today. Distractions, church, mm, my God, uh, uh, takes away and makes intimacy impossible. Distraction makes intimacy impossible. Some of y'all don't believe that. That's why you didn't say nothing. Because in order to feel, in order, to, for, in order for someone to, to feel intimate with you, whether it's a spouse, whether it's a child, whether it's a good friend, uh, they have to believe, first of all, my God, that you care about them. If people don't think that you care, they're not going to let you in. If people think that you always come with arterial motives, uh, they're, they're, they're going to put some walls up. Do I got a witness out there? And so you and I understand that it's almost, in, have to understand that it's almost impossible, I'm going to say almost impossible to have intimacy with someone that you do not spend time with. And if you're being pulled in four different directions, oh my God, how can you have intimacy with someone or something if you're spending your time in four different places? Are you with me so far? Mm. Mm. You must consider, mm, you must consider them a priority, a person that you want to spend time with, a child that you want to spend time with, a good friend that you want to spend time with. You and I, I and you must consider them a priority in your life, mm, that you have plenty of unrushed time. See, you got to make sure that you're not rushed when you're sitting with someone trying to build a solid foundation concerning relationship with someone. Uh huh. Uh huh. You are you. You have to give them your undivided attention, yes. and you can't give someone your undivided attention if you're going in four different directions. Oh my God! I'm gonna end up in Jerusalem tonight. I promise you. Uh, you, 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 you can't, you can't, you can't give your undivided loyalty, uh, my God, to someone, my God, if you're poor uh, and focus in four different directions. Oh, I'm reminded that this David said, Lord, I believe it was David. He said, Give me an undivided heart. Give me undivided loyalty. Oh, our loyalty tonight is very divided. Oh, we loyal to God when we need something, but after he take the squeeze off, my God, then we are torn and going so many different directions. It's hard to build a relationship, my God, even in our marriages, my God, if, I, if we rush to spend time with each other, if we divide it, my God, if all kind of stuff is distracting us, how can you have intimacy in your relationship as husband and wife? Am I talking to the right crowd so far? How can you have intimacy with God, my God, if you're distracted every time you try to get into the presence of the Lord? How can you get fresh revelation tonight if your mind is all over the place right now tonight, even though you hear your pastor's voice speaking, my God, but you ain't mm, receiving anything because your mind is somewhere else. Distraction. Mm -hmm. Are y'all with me so far? Distractions keep, my God, our most important relationships shallow. Mm -hmm. Including, as I stated, our relationship with God. Let me give you this. Study shows that distractions makes us ineffective. Write that down. Paul, I mean, Peter said, I will not have you ineffective and unproductive concerning the knowledge that you have of God. All the knowledge that you have, all the scriptures that you quote, all the promises that you stand on, are you being effective or unproductive with the knowledge that you have? Oh, my God, y'all stay with me. How effective are you right now with everything that you know concerning the Constitution, which is the Word of God? How, how effective, how productive are you concerning the knowledge that you have of God's kingdom? Deep, 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 deep question. Because many people are full of the Constitution, full of the Word of God. Know it better than I know it, my God. But are you effective and are you being productive? But if you are distracted, my God, it would render you ineffective and unproductive. Distractions is a bad enemy, my God, to progress. Oh, I'm going somewhere, I promise you, my God. Mm. Oh, my God. Some people call it multitasking. 
Yeah, yeah. Some think it means we are on top of things and efficient. However, it means that nothing, my God, has your full undivided attention. Oh, I learned something right there. We call it the word today in America is I'm multitasking. I know how to multitask. Yeah, we do know how to multitask, but really, my God, we leaving stuff unattended to. Oh, my God, we may bounce from here and bounce from there and bounce from there, but ain't nothing getting done. Ain't nothing getting finished, my God. Oh, my God, because we call ourselves multitasking. That's just another form of distractions. Mm. That's why I teach y'all and have been teaching y'all, my God, you have to have laser focus in this hour. Oh, my God, as I was interceding and praying for some of the brothers of the ministry, my God, oh, my God, somewhere along the way, oh, my God, they have lost focus, my God. Somewhere, uh, somewhere, some, 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 somewhere along the way, my God, they have got distracted, my God. Oh, my God, and something has picked them off, my God, as I begin to pray and intercede as God brought different men to my spirit, my God. And once upon a time, they was running hard for the Lord. Uh, they was consistent, my God. But now something has creeped in, my God, and now they're torn between loyalty to God and loyalty to their wives and loyalty to the house, my God. They are torn and going in four different ways because of distractions. Major, major enemy. So for all those that always like to say, I'm good at multitasking, you're good at living stuff unfinished. And so if you are very good at multitasking, what can you point to to say it's fruitful? All the stuff that you're doing in the course of a day, my God, is anything fruitful, my God? Is anything pushing and advancing God's kingdom to all my multitaskers? What can you point to that you can say that right there and that right there and that right there? What is the fruit, my God, of you being so gifted in multitasking? Are you with me so far? Hmm. Simply put, if my God, if we are to live productive spiritual lives, we must learn to deal with distractions. So the title of my sermon tonight is, my God, Death by Distractions. Death. Something is dying because we're too distracted. Something is being effective in a negative way because we're being distracted. Intimacy has been robbed. Oh, my God, with God, with wives, with children. Oh, my God, because we are being distracted. Distracted. That's why I said death by distraction. Look at your neighbor and say death. There is no way that you could be intimate with God and you don't spend no time with him. There is no way, my God, you could be intimate with your significant other if you don't spend no time with her. Oh, my God, I'm talking to myself. Come on, I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Oh, my God, there's no way, my God, you're going to be able to be, ben- that you're going to benefit at the level, Shemaine, that we desire to benefit, my God, if we don't spend time with God in his word. Oh, my God, it's simple, my God, but it's profound. Oh, because we distracted, but we gifted, we say, at multitasking. What can you point to as I get ready to move? What can you point to, all you multitaskers, that you can say is fruitfulness? What can you point to? Since you got all this stuff going on that you can accomplish, what is fruitful? What is fruitful? What is burned fruit, my God, so somebody, my God, can be blessed by that which you have accomplished, you say? Think about it, think about it, think about it. Death by distraction. Don't get too busy. Don't get too busy. So point number one, put it on the screen for me, daughter. Distraction is not the same as a divine interruption. Distraction is not the same as a divine interruption. Jesus seemed to be extremely focused, y'all, and unable to be distracted. Mm. When you pay close attention and read the synoptic gospels real slow and carefully, uh, Jesus, my God, didn't give his attention to stuff that was chicken stuff. Oh, he focused on his assignment. That's why I teach y'all so important to know what your purpose is. That's why it's so important for you to be saying, God, I'm talking about bum board to heaven. Say, God, show me what I'm called to do. Reveal to me my purpose, my God. Because people that's operating and moving in purpose, they tend to guard against distractions. Then they begin to make decisions that I taught y'all years ago called destiny decisions. You got to begin to make decisions based on your destiny. You got to begin to make decisions based on where you're going. But if you don't know who you are and you, don't, you forget whose you are and you don't know what your purpose is in life, you'll be all over the place. And you will be doing a whole lot of things, my God, thinking you being effective, but you being ineffective. ineffective. Are y'all with me so far? And so Jesus, my God, was entirely focused, and he was unable to be distracted. 
For example, in Matthew 12, Jesus, Jesus wouldn't even let his family keep him away from what he knew God wanted him to do. They said, Jesus, your, your mother then was out of Jesus. Huh? I said, well, who is my mother and my father? Those that do the will of the father. That's my mother and that's my father. He wasn't being insensitive, my God. But I want you to know that some of the main people that gets in our way is our family members. Some of the main people that the enemy will use to distract you, my God, is your brothers, your sisters, your mama. Come on, somebody. Uh, your mother-in-law, your father-in-law. Come on. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Jesus said, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was teaching them, my God, you can't let nothing interfere with your assignment. That don't mean you being insensitive. That don't mean that you don't care about God. But God said, you know what? I, uh, my, 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 my mother and my father is those that's carrying on God's will. Those that's being productive. Those that advance in God's kingdom. Those that love what I love and hate what I hate. That's who God said his mother and father is. Yeah. Come on, think about it. They said, your mother and father, sir. He said, who? Who? Those that do the will of the father. That is my mother and father. Oh, he wasn't being hard. He wasn't being insistent to his, his, his mother Mary. My God, he just they said, I'm going on. Uh, I can't stop. Nehemiah said, why should I come down? I'm carrying on a great work. You ain't nothing but a distraction to me, my God. All that noise you're talking about, you always calling me complaining. You always got excuses. You always need a meeting. You always need somebody to pray with you. You're always walking around sad. You're always in the midst of hell all the time. That's a distraction. If you just be effective and productive with the knowledge that you already have, my God, you wouldn't be so easily picked off and distracted. Mm. Somebody give God a hand for me. I come to help you tonight through the Holy Ghost. In John 4, we see that not even his hunger could keep him from pursuing God's will. His disciple had gone off to get something to eat, and he, and he stuck around. And started to speak to a woman at the well. Mm -hmm. And they said, aren't you hungry? And he says, my food is to do the will of the one who sent me. Uh, come on, somebody. He's sitting. And here comes the Samaritan woman. See, the heart coming up. My God, to talk to the king. Divine interruption. He spoke to the woman of God. The woman of God caught fire. Broke loose and ran to the camp and caused the whole village to come see this man called Jesus. See, that's what you call a divine interruption. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, my God. Jesus said, I'm not going to be distracted. Think about this church. Stay with me now. He didn't even let his own natural mama, my God, distract him from doing what he felt like he needed to do. But he stopped for the Samaritan woman. Don't you know that it was Jews didn't even associate with Samaritans? <laughs> oh, my God. But he was sitting here strategic. Come on, somebody. Oh, my God. God got some strategic divine interruptions going to happen in your life. It's a good thing. Yes. It's a good thing. So he's sitting up chilling, and here come this woman. Uh, the people was going off, the disciples going off, and uh, they, you know, and Jesus, they come back, and Jesus say, uh, my food is to do the will of the Father. But while he's sitting, here comes an opportunity to be used. I wonder, are we passing up oh, divine interruptions, and that people, God, that God is bringing people into your life, because when you lead them to Christ, they're going to go back and help a whole village get saved. Yeah. See, you, you and I can't get out of balance and think that we, are, we can't let nothing distract us. That's not the moral of the story. You see what I'm trying to say? You have to know when to shift and when not to shift. You got to know what. You and I have to learn what to give our attention to, when to give our attention to it, and when not to give our attention to it. Jesus knew that I didn't have time to deal with mama and him, but I got time to deal with this lost soul. I can't get nobody to say nothing like that. Don't ever get to the point where you see a lost soul that's wasting time. Uh, when you have an opportunity to pray for someone, when you have an opportunity to witness to someone, my God, that woman of God, Tanya, caught fire and went back and set the whole village on fire. And they came to see Jesus. They said, okay, we, not, we don't just believe now because of what you said. We believe because we didn't see with our own eyes. Oh, my God. Come on, somebody. Divine interruptions. Yeah, 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 yeah. And Jesus didn't even let King's stomach in the fur. Oh, my God. Some of us can't even fast for 12 hours because our stomach talked too loud. Come on, somebody. When you're trying to get something from God, you got to be able to crucify King stomach. Mm. Yeah, yeah. John 15, I mean, 5, 7 says, Jesus said, replied, my father's always working, so am I. My father's always working, so am I. Now, don't take that out of context. Don't take that out of context. Jesus saying, I'm always working. I'm doing the will of the father. You see what I'm trying to say? I want you to understand something. When you're doing what God specifically called you to do and equipped you to do, you don't get tired. 
Because you're doing it in the spirit and not in the flesh. Oh, my God, my God. You, you don't get tired like that when you want to quit. You'll know when, my God, your, your physical body say, okay, it's time to take a sailor for a minute. But you're a sailor, Keisha, but then you'll get right back up and continue to do the will of God. Some people, my God, has convinced themselves, I'm tired, I need to step down. See, that ain't God, that's flesh. Oh, my God. Because you, you step down because you let somebody fin you. Or uh, you let something that, that you thought, my God, that should have happened or didn't happen. Somebody said something to you that you didn't like. Pass it and do something that you felt like I should have done. Whatever the situation is, and you sit down on God. Yeah, yeah. That's not taking a sail, a sail out of rest. Yes, right. That means you ever got offended and you have stepped down. That's flesh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, let me tell you why. Let me balance. Let me balance. Because if God told you to do that, how are you going to let somebody make you stop doing it? So now you got to ask yourself, was I really called to do that? Yeah. Because many times, and me and Pastor Ron was talking today, we could quit, we could get discouraged, Pastor D and quit. Oh my God, I thought about it many times. I can't get nobody to say nothing, Janine. Oh my God, but my calling demands that I keep pushing. When I think about what God has done for you, Shemaine, when I think about what God has done for you, man, I got to keep pushing, baby. Uh, my, my, my food is to do the will of the Father. Yeah. That's why many of them quit because they fools not to do the will. Oh, they want vain glory, my God. They want to be looked at and, and applauded, my God. But they understand there's a price got to be paid when you're in leadership. There's a price got to be paid to do the will of the Father. Everything going to come easy. Oh, my God. Many, many enemies going to come after you when you're trying to do the will of the Father. Jesus said, my will is to do the will of the Father. My food is to do the will of the Father. When you're in God's will, you don't quit. You come off the battlefield to recharge. To go back in and kill and talk to some more demons. My God. Quit getting involved with stuff and talking about God told me to do it. And then three months later you quit. You make yourself look bad. I'm sorry. So you and I got to be prepared every single day for divine interruptions. Oh, let me tell you what God done to me. So I'm sitting in the office. My God uh, had a visit with a guy that came that Dwayne sent me to, uh, to come over and look at the, the commercial kitchens and stuff to get ready, get it ready to take care of kingdom business. Brother Gary, uh, we walked around and we began to talk. I guess he could tell there was something about me that wasn't traditional. Mm. Oh my God, so we get over to the, to, to the community center and we begin to talk. And he began to let me into a space and begin to share some things about, about him, my God, that I can identify with. Uh, what am I trying to say? He's been through some things like I've been through some things. Yeah. Oh, my God. So what we did, we took care of that natural business. So then we standing in the middle of the campus right out there in the parking lot. And so we started fellowshipping. Mm -hmm. And so, therefore, I began to tell them about the men's discipleship. I began to tell them about the band of brothers on Thursday. I began to tell them about the discipleship classes on Sunday. My God, I began to tell them a little bit more about my story. Oh, my God. And then he began to tell me a little bit more about his story. Oh, my God, he began to let me into a place, into his life, because I can identify with the struggles that he had that God has delivered me from, my God. And so he told me about some mistakes he made, my God, and I told him what he needed to do. He explained to me, my God, how it has affected his marriage, and I told him what he needed to do. My God, and before you know it, we praying, and we giving God the glory. And since then, that was Monday, and to this day, he's still texting, still he'd be at the men's meeting and so forth for a divine interruption. Watch this. I'm, I, I, see, this is what you call favor. This is because something that was going to cost the church anywhere from ten to twenty thousand, five thousand. Let, 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 let me help you. One going with you. See, because I didn't try to. I didn't try to be super spiritual. Matter of fact, I had on my dickies, old raggedy looking shirt, my God, being who I am, I can't get nobody to say, see, that's what, I'm serious about what I'm saying, see, I didn't try to be all super spiritual and try to act like I'm all that because I got a big old campus and all that, no, I'm always going to be me, as my daughter said, I'm not going to shriek, I'm not going to try to impress you, my God, because I was being me, and that man seen there was something about this pastor, oh my God, that he can identify, and he felt comfortable enough, star, my God, to begin to shout with me about his addictions and his struggles and his hangups and his habits, my God, and so I can identify with him, my God, and he reached out and said, ooh, Pastor, if you just follow this way, my God, I can save you thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. He didn't have to do that, but yeah. because I took time to pray with him, because I took time to listen to him. Oh, my God, I was available for him. I could have said, what you got to do? Go on, I got stuff to do. I could have been rushing. I could have been distracted, my God. But God brought that man to me so I could help that brother. And he's going to be sitting up in on Monday nights, my God, giving God some glory. Somebody give God the glory, man. Oh, man. 
Wonder why I be going so hard, man. God be doing all kind of stuff, my God. God is up to things, my God. I can't get, oh. See, God know how to wink at you, Amber. God know how to let you know, my God. Oh, I'm right, you right there? You right there? Are you missing God's winks in your course of your day? Are you so distracted, so busy, and God is winking at you, and you don't even recognize that it's a wink? Sometimes it may be from your job, you're doing a good job. That's a wink. You might get a text from your son or your daughter that you ain't got in a long time, and she he tell you, I love you. God just winked. Boy, y'all don't. When God brings people in your life and they begin to care about you, people begin to do stuff for you because people ain't got to do nothing for you. God didn't wink at you. Oh, my God. So I thank God for that divine interruption. See, I could have been busy. I got all kind of stuff to do, but I'm never too busy to share the testimony, to share God's glory, to share God's goodness. Some of you are walking past divine opportunities, and you're not letting God do divine interruptions in your life. It's okay to let God interrupt your life. So because I submitted, I saved the church thousands of dollars. Oh, my God. Mm. Point number two. Did that help anybody so far? Amen. Come on, somebody talk to me. Is that helping anybody? Mm-hmm. That's okay, because many of us are distracted right now. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Ghost. I'm going to do what you told me to do. I'm going to encourage the people. Thank you. Death by distraction. Death by distraction. What's dying? What's been effective? What's been hindered? Because you're so distracted. What has shifted your focus? What got your attention more than God do? What voice is the loudest in your life more than God's voice right now? What are you focusing on the longest that has become the strongest in your mind? What has God asked you to do that you keep talking yourself out of doing? What has God revealed to you and told you this is what you're supposed to do, but you keep negotiating, trying to, because you can't negotiate with God, trying to negotiate with God concerning what he told you to do? Why are you doing something over there when you're supposed to be doing something right here? So when you get through wasting time over there, God going to say this is still right here. This ain't going nowhere. While you over there wasting time and you're doing a good thing, your purpose is right here. Yeah. Doing the God thing. Oh, good. Good. Distractions, point number two. Distractions can keep you from the essential. Ooh, my God. Y'all ready? What Martha was doing was not bad, church. Honestly. She was serving and taking care of people. That's, 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 that's a good thing. Using her spiritual gifts. Jesus, though, gently rebuked rebuked her, I mean, rebuke of her was that she let too many, she she let too many good things keep her from the one essential thing. That's what he corrected her about, somewhat rebuked her about. You're doing a lot of good things. The man of God told me you got to keep the main thing the main thing. You're doing a lot of good things, but you're not doing the essential thing. You're doing a lot of good things, but you're not doing what I told you to do. You over here dancing and James Brown and doing all this stuff to clear your fleshly conscience, but you have not done. You in disobedience over here doing this because you ain't done what I told you to do over here. This is the essential thing. This is the main thing. But you over here doing all this because it feels good to you. But the people don't know that even though you're doing something, they thank you in obedience. You're really in disobedience to God. I'm trying to help you, church. I'm not trying to hurt you. Many of us is doing a whole lot of good things, but we're not doing the essential thing. That specific thing that God told you to do. Mm. Oh, my God, obedience is better than a sacrifice. Yeah. Many of us are sacrificing, my God, favor. We, we're sacrificing resources. Uh, we miss it out. Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. Some of us is over here. Stay with me, y'all. Doing all these good things. But the people that's going to unlock things in your life, the people that's going to help you get promoted, people that's going to automatically bless you, they over there. So you way over here out of position. And you steady crying out, telling my God, we in and word and all that. God said, you out of position. The people that I sent to bless you is over here. You way over here because you're doing this good thing. You out of position. Think about that. 
You're carrying on doing good things, but you're not doing the essential thing. And so you all on the wrong road. You over here on this road, and your blessings is on this road. Boy, y'all need to stay with me, church. Yeah. I'm trying to help you. You way over here, yeah. but your blessings is over here. Yes. Yeah. You way over here doing a lot of good stuff because you're scared to do what God told you to do. Uh, you feel like you disqualify yourself doing what God told you to do. You don't have no self-confidence to do what God told you to do. Come on. You self sabotage and not do what God told you to do, so you're over doing some good things. At least I'm doing something. Again, obedience is better than the sacrifice. Yeah. And so everybody that's assigned to your life, my God is coming down this street, but you on the wrong street. Oh, you don't go on that when you're supposed to be on Sheridan. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. That's your problem right there. God didn't move on. You still stuck over there out of position. On the wrong street. God didn't move over. He ready to bless you over here. Come on, somebody. Oh, my God. He's over here in Jerusalem. God said, the Bible said, God's headed toward Jerusalem. I'm following where God's going. You follow in people's voice. Oh, that's not you. That's people. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all know what it is. Y'all know who y'all talk to. Yeah, they follow somebody else's voice. I'm following God's voice. Just keep on watching. I promise you. I said just keep on watching. I'm following God's voice. They follow man's voice, D. They follow man's voice, Ron. Keep following God's voice. Don't let the people distract you from obeying God. Don't let the people hinder you from doing what God has called you to do. I speak blessings over Connection Church. Never surrender to the people. Always follow God's voice. Under no circumstances, son, do you ever submit to man over God. Ooh, pastor, that was harsh. No, that was just real. That's my son. He can handle it. Many people are sabotaging Tanya because they listen to man's voice. They go with the opinions of the many. Death by distraction. I don't know how many people that came back to us and talked to us and said, man, I should have never left. I got out the will of the God. And it's such a struggle to get back. When you come back, I'm going to be just like that. Get on over there and sit down. Get ready to get to class and get yourself back ready. Let's get back to doing what we got to do. Because see, that's the heart of the Father. That's the heart of the Father. I'm not going to never cast you away, but quit listening to the voice of the people. You know who you're talking to. You know what people that got their mouth on everything. But look at the fruit. Yeah. Be a fruit inspector. Right there. Right there. Look at the fruit, baby. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. Somebody give God a hand. Somebody give God a hand. Yeah, death. Mm, bad distractions. Mm-hmm. So don't get caught up doing many good things. And not doing the one essential thing. This is how distractions work. We trade, my God, something that only... We trade something that we only can get one shot at for things that really aren't important. We get one shot, but we trade it in for stuff that's not really important. We trade it in for stuff that's not really important. What have you traded? The only thing that I want to trade in is that God gave me life, and I gave him my death. Talking about Calvary. That was an exchange from death to life. What are you trading in for the good thing? What are you trading in with the devil? What are you trading? What are you negotiating? What are you bargaining with the devil, the world, and the flesh? You got three enemies, the flesh, the world, and the devil. What are you trading? Why, don't, why, don't, why, why come you don't uh, get, take the opportunity not to trade in your worry with peace? Trade in your weakness with God's strength. Trade in your unsettledness in your spirit for God's, oh my God, high serenity in your mind. See that? Let it be an exchange tonight. Give God that and you take what God got for you. Amen. 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 Uh, you get only one shot, my God, with certain things. Y'all always hear me, you get one shot with people. It's not always good to shrink when you have an opportunity to let God shine. It's not always good to shy away when you have an opportunity to let God's light shine through you because you get one shot with people. One shot. God may bring people into your life because you are the one that has the key to unlock their life. So I'm walking into the weight room, and my son, Brother Boyd, right there is coming out. He's coming out the weight room. I'm going in. There was an exchange. He stopped and greeted the man of God out of honor and respect, giving God the glory. And then he introduced me to the young man. And now he's sitting here. I don't know what's going on in his mind, but I can say, I bet you he said, now there's something about that one that's different from all the other ones. Yeah. Yeah. I like the way he flow. Divine interruption. A divine exchange. Yeah. 
Focus on the essential and not the good. Yeah. See what I'm trying to say? That was divine. Thank you, Brother Boyle, for bringing him tonight. Amen. Because we don't know what God's going to say. And I already have said to spark his attention. So make sure that you take advantage of the one shot that you get. When I was listening, when I was looking and praying and evaluating, I was inspecting Amber and Christian, seeing how they respond to your leadership as worship leaders. I've been trained, Pastor, to pay attention to how the people respond when you bring people in. That's a nugget. And there was people that didn't respond and they never got another invite. People that you pastor will tell you if there's, a, if, there's, if there's a confirmation there when you bring outsiders in. <laughs> Ooh, that's meat right there. Thank you for writing, pastors. I see that. And I watch how they respond. And I listen to the buzz. And I listen to the talk. And it settled me in my spirit. Mm -hmm. And then we moved forward, and now we heard Christian. Now let's give God a hand for him. Mm -hmm. Death by distraction. Look at this, Ecclesiastes 9, 10. It says, whatever you do, do well. <laughs> For when you go to the grave, there will be no work or planning or knowledge or wisdom. Whatever you do, do well. Don't halfway do nothing. Quit telling yourself you're gifted at multitasking. No, that's just telling yourself you ain't completing nothing and you got divided attention. You divide it. Division. One of the worst things is to be divided within your own self. That's, a, that's, that's torn between two opinions. When you are divided, you always talking yourself out of something. God, that's, God, you didn't say that. God, you mean that? Just give me another confirmation. Just send some. You, you, you just divided. That's, that's an internal war. That's an internal war. And you waste a lot of time vacillating. Some things you're going to stumble up on. God is not going to reveal everything to you. He's not going to show you, Vontez, everything all in one season, son. What you do is you walk. You strive to be holy. You strive to live right. You spend time with God. And I tell you, my God, the safest place is in his will. When you're in God's will, my God, everything that's supposed to come to you will come to you. When you remove yourself from up under covering, when you remove yourself, my God, from up under, the, up under apostolic anointing, my God, you open yourself up for major, major attacks. Mm, mm, mm. I'm speaking by experience. Bumped in one of, to one of my sons, as I told y'all, I believe in the gym, and uh, he's out of the river. Everything is, I know, Pastor, I know, Pastor, I know, Pastor. I know, Pastor. The very thing he said you wasn't going to do, you did. I said, people like me and you don't get to do that. Because you come home and you evangelize everything. You told everybody, I go to going on for Christ. I'm up under there with Pastor Juju. We're going hard for Christ. And you was running hard. So some of them same real ones just sitting back peeping games saying, I'm going to see how long you're going to last. You didn't drop that already. Now you didn't ruin your witness. Said you don't get to do that. That some of them people that came into your life, that crossed your path, man of God, they need what you need, what you have on the inside of you. And now you're not running. Yeah. Now you're not walking. Now you're not serving. Now you're not even coming. That's a stumbling block yeah. to those that are sitting back watching you. So when they bump into you, they're going to say, okay, where the fire at now? I thought you was over there with Juju. <laughs> what happened? What am I trying to say? See, you don't understand. You have to understand. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Let me be pastoral. You and I, I and you have to understand. When you go out and witness and you begin to evangelize and you begin to tell people about the goodness of the Lord and you begin to talk about all this stuff concerning God and then months later, weeks later, all of a sudden you didn't dry it up. That's a bad witness to God. And it brings a lot of shame on your life. And then you give people the opportunity to say, I told you he wasn't going to make it. Y'all know my story. They still think I'm out in the streets doing something illegal. <laughs> I'm all on, all on social media right now, all live. They still waiting for me to fall. 20 plus years later, they still got their mouth on me, still talking about I'm not real, but I'm carrying on a good work. Amen. But one amen, thing. Amen, amen, amen. I, I didn't need to clap. I didn't need to clap. I didn't need to clap because one thing I've always told y'all somebody need to adopt my mindset because it'll help you. Yeah. 
Yeah. If you begin to quit trying to disassociate yourself from me and begin to take on some of my mindsets and live with some of the principles that God has caused me to live by, you'll see your life increase. You'll see your life advance in life because I live a good life. And I was living one before I birthed the church, giving God the glory. But I live by this principle right here, Stacy. And you have heard me say it. I don't never want to give the people an opportunity to say I told you he wasn't going to make it. So that propels me. That drives me. Do you got a cause for anything? I don't ever want the people to say, Trey, Stephen, that I told you you weren't going to make it. Don't you ever let nobody tell you that. You don't never give an op a person an opportunity, son, to say, I told you Trey wasn't going to make it. I promise you, son, they watching, Stephen. They watching, waiting to see how long this is going to be. And some of those people that ain't came that you've been inviting, keep on walking, son. Stay faithful. And if they're going to start showing up, I promise you, men of God. wonder how many people has mocked God. It grieves me. That's why I call it death by distraction. Do you love your brothers and sisters enough to hurt for them? Are you concerned about the people that's backsliding on you, even though they're sitting in the church? Stepping down from all kind of stuff because of flesh. Don't know how to submit to authority. Don't want to answer to nobody. Unteachable. Death by distraction. Same people said, I'm with you. Sit down on you. Death by distraction. When you hear that type of heartbeat and you hear that type of more noise, that's somebody that got distracted. Something has happened. Oh, it's quiet. And I, I needed to be quiet. Because you would never reach your destiny. You would ever become that full oak tree of righteousness if you allowed distractions to constantly rob you. Distraction is robbing you of your energy, it's robbing you of your peace, it's robbing you of your time, it's robbing you in your body. That's why a cheerful heart is good for the body. I put that out on social media this morning. Many of us are sick in our body because we're miserable in our mind. It ain't the devil, it's because you're making, you got too many distractions. You let too much stuff interfere and disrupt you. Why don't you have a godly interruption instead of fleshly interruption? We let flesh interruptions instead of God. Oh, my God, that Samaritan woman interrupted God, stopped him. When a man was sitting on the side, my God, on the road, he cried out, Jesus, have mercy on me. Jesus was on his way to take her a kingdom bidding, but that man shouted so loud, Jesus, have mercy on me. It made God stop. Who, my God, is your cry desperate enough to make Jesus stop? Are you hungry enough to make Jesus stop? Oh, Jesus, he, yeah, I know Jesus don't never get distracted, but this man is sitting right there talking about Jesus. And they said, be quiet. Jesus, be quiet. Jesus, be quiet. Then Jesus stopped. Walked over to him. Told him, come on. Got on up. Started pushing. Went and told everybody. They got mad because he healed on the Sabbath. He said, I don't come at all that. I know that I was blind and once said I couldn't walk and now I see I can walk. All that you talking about don't mean nothing to me. Come on, come oh on. my God, the come man on. that's been lame for 38 years sitting by the pool beside. I don't come about nothing y'all talking about right now. Who am I? You want about tradition and religion. Some of you can't get free because you let somebody keep you in your seat. I wonder what she going to think. I wonder what he going to think. I wonder what they going to say if I confess this stuff. My God, you, you, you're giving people too much of your time. Yes. You focus too long on the people. That's another distraction. God, the devil uses people to distract you. Yes. Oh, I promise you, I'm not trying to preach. I'm trying to teach you. Amen. Is God helping anybody tonight? Amen. Okay. Let me move on. Let me move on. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Colossians 3, 323 says, says, work willingly at whatever you do, as though you were working for the Lord. <sighs> as you was working for the Lord. Rather than for people. That right there is a motive check. Check your motives. Or why you're doing what you do. In the local church. Because if you're doing it. For fleshly accolades. Fleshly appraise. Fleshly approval. Soon as you stop getting there you sit down. Or you go to another church. And contaminate that church. Trying to make yourself look good when you go to another church and put this one down. I'm just keeping on the dollar. They online looking. I'm keeping on the dollar. That's what happens in the body of Christ. And that's why we are ineffective and unproductive as a people of God to agree. That's why people don't respect Christians no more. That's why the pool pit is not respected because the leaders and pastors are prostituting themselves to the world. 
They one way up here and another way in private. And when it come out, my God, it brings mockery on the body of Christ. Somewhere along the line, my brothers and my sisters, my fellow clergymen that's online, you done got distracted. Death by distraction. What's dying because you're distracted? How can you preach the gospel up here and go home and do something you shouldn't be doing? Distractions. How can you go so hard in a local church and go out there and live so raggedy? Distractions. How can you offer your gift to the body of Christ and then go pimp your gift to the clubs and, and be bought for the highest price? All in the clubs using your gift that God bless you with to bless the body of Christ. You didn't sold it to the world. Death by distractions. Mm, mm, mm. Yes, Lord. 1 Corinthians 14 says, Paul says, when you're with the people of God, be all there. Everyone should attend church service with something to offer and expecting something from God. Every time you come to the house of the Lord, you want to be able to offer something and you want to be able to receive something. Now again, exchange. Who in her needs something from God? Who in her needs something from me? See what I'm trying to say? Look to be a blessing instead of always coming to get a blessing. Yeah. See what I'm trying to say? People that don't honor God with their giving, they, they want everything, but they don't want to give nothing. Stingy. God said, keep it. I don't even need it. That's Bible. And I'm telling you, keep it. If you ain't giving in the right spirit, keep it. He gonna provide for this. I tell you, I'm so far in faith. Janice, I'm so far out of the boat, woman of God. I'm all the way in faith. And everything about me over here at this day and time and this season is all in faith, my God. I promise you, I ain't worried about nothing. I'm so settled, my God. I'm so chilly, chill, my God. I ain't worried about nothing, my God. Because God gonna supply all of us need. Because what God called for, he provides for. And he been providing, my God, yeah. over and beyond. Yeah. I will not let nothing distract me for this season that I'm in. I'm going to enjoy this season because God put me in it so I can't enjoy it, so I can torment the devil. I ain't doing nothing but torment the devil. Ah, somebody give God a hand. Somebody give God a hand. Yes. Yeah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Mm. Make sure that you uh, give something after you get something. Are y'all with me so far? Look to be a blessing to somebody. When you come to the house, look to serve. Look to be loving. Look to give a handshake. Look to give a smile. If you know one of your brothers and sisters is struggling, put something in the hand. Don't go tell everybody. Just put it there and keep pushing. Lay it on the altar and keep pushing. Put it in a purse or his purse, whatever. And put it. Keep pushing. Come on, somebody. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In times of rest and solitude, I'm almost through. Be all there. Now, this one got me. As I was beginning to study and formulate my sermon, if you think about rest, you know, we're not always there when we call ourselves resting. We're still distracted even though we're supposed to be resting. Are y'all with me so far? Uh, when you should be laying down, you make sure your iPad is next to you. When you should be giving a significant other undivided attention, Facebook keep going off and you want to see what it is. Wherever you at, be there. Tony Rinky points out, and I'm finishing with this here, points out, Tony Reniki points out the irony of the phone. It is that it keeps us isolated from people when we're with them. Everybody on the phone. Everybody here, when you order your food, everybody order it right back here. Put it down for a minute, right back here. It keeps us isolated from the people when we're with them and distracted by people when we should be isolated from them. Phone. I should be isolated from them, but I'm constantly communicating with them. I need to go over and pray, but I'm constantly texting. They constantly texting. Every time you get ready to go in and pray, my God, they send a long text, and now you got to respond to it. See what I'm trying to say? Uh, some people that we need to be isolated from, the phones keeps us connected to. Some of us can't live without the phone. You can't turn it off for six hours, you'll lose your mind. Uh, you won't even turn it off when you fast. Well, I do. Learn how to quit letting the phone become a distraction. I'm talking about when you're resting, when you're at home, when you should be giving some people your undivided attention, my God, you divided between them and the phone. You can't really receive, my God, in church, my God, because you stay looking at your phone. Everybody ain't on their phone taking notes like Christian and me is over there. Somebody on your phone because you, you on Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> Shakapa, shike, da la yeah. Yeah. No reverence. 
No weapons for God's presence. That's very, very dangerous when you have no reverence for the presence of the Lord. It's dangerous, man. Fleshly stuff. Got all your attention. You can't receive no impartation. God can't plant no revelation in you because you're so distracted. Even sitting in the house of the Lord. Mind all over the place. Walked in her, my God, with stuff from the world, stuff from life, stuff from the relationship, stuff from marriage, stuff from kids, stuff from the job, and all that had an opportunity to come down her and lay it down, but you sat on it. And now that very stuff that you sat on is sitting on top of you, and you can't even focus. Distracted. So something is dying in our lives when you're that distracted. Oh, my God. That's why we got to learn how to come into the presence of the Lord. You're coming before a holy God that has all authority, all power, my God, to meet any need, to heal any sickness, to give you divine wisdom, to reverse what the doctor said, to heal you mentally, emotionally. Quit letting distractions rob you of an opportunity for God to bless your soul. Quit coming up in the house of the Lord and being so distracted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're coming before the king. He has everything that you need. Yeah. Everything that you're praying for. Everything that you're fasting for. Everything that you need. I'm redundant. Everything, Alicia, that you need, the king has. But when you come to the place where the king is at, you're distracted. Yeah. You're crying out, God, get me. God, help me. God, do this. And God said, you're in my presence, but you are completely distracted. Yeah. I gave you that word. The word, my God, that you had, that, that you need, I gave it to you. But you missed it because you're distracted. Yeah. You should have been looking up. You was looking down at your phone. Now it went over your head. Come on, Come on Pastor. You're trying to focus, and then he's sending you a text and say, what time are you going to get out of church? Because I want to pull up on you. You're distracted. Come on, You need that God idea, as the late doctor say, my God, and you come into the presence of the Lord, God to give you that God idea, and you miss it because you're distracted. That's why I call it death by distraction. Stuff is dying. People are staying sick and wounded and broken. Oh, my God, because you are distracted, my God. Who in my life is waiting on me, my God, but I'm distracted? Yeah. 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 Mm, mm, mm. Thank you. Thank you, men of God. Help the people. That's all I want to do. Be your people and change lives. Hallelujah. I'm going to finish this and I'm going to get out your way. Mm. God has a purpose in solitude and silence. And many of us never get it because stuff is always on our minds. We're always checking on stuff. There's a purpose when God takes you off the battlefield and puts you in solitude for a minute. He's trying to, he's trying to clean you up and give you some more. He's trying to, he, he wants you to detox so he can post something else in you. Oh, he, try, he said, oh, that season is over, let me give you the new season. Oh, my God, you was job well done in that season, now I'm going to give you and show you the, point you the direction to your next season. Oh, my God, there's a purpose when you go into solitude, man. Quit taking your phones and iPads and all your problems into solitude. Learn how to sit, my God, with the king. Oh, my God, it's an art. It's an art. Oh, my God, of learning how to sit. Oh, my God, with the king. Sitting with the king don't mean always you're doing this. Just learn how to sit. Because if you really trust God like we profess that we do, and you know that he has all of the answers, God has all, Stacy, God has all of the resources, pleasure, everything that a human being need to be successful, my God, in this life, he got. But we don't know how to sit with him. When we come into his presence, we're distracted. I'm guilty of it too, church. I don't uh, Sometimes I have to read one scripture five times just to get some revelation because your mind be bombarded with life. Oh, my God, the enemy is doing all kind of stuff in this world, my God, to, to, to divide us. Many people in the body of Christ everywhere is divided. Oh, my God, they got divided, Lord. The world is coming at you. Marriage is coming at you. Children is coming at you. Bills is coming at you. Kids is coming at you. All kind of stuff. They tripping on the job. People trying to run you off the road. You come out to your sky, your car scratched all up, your tires all on the flat. You're getting all this stuff. The enemy is doing everything he can to keep them busy and keep them distracted so they can be uneffective ineffective and unproductive yeah. Yeah. keep them busy yeah. keep them distracted yeah. keep them pressed I mean stressed out keep them in worry they can't be fruitful they won't have no good aroma yeah. Yeah. Wow. 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 
That's why I tell y'all Wednesdays is my favorite service. Because we get to do this right here. Mm, mm, mm. Distraction. Mm. It's one of Satan's primary tools to keep us from it, it, or considering the eternal, y'all. It's one of Satan's primary tools to keep us from considering the eternal. How focused are you on eternal things? I'm finna finish. I'm finna finish. How focused are you? How really focused are you tonight? Ask yourself in the course of a day, how much attention and how much focus do you really give your spiritual life? That's a heavy question right there. Because I promise you, if you calculate up the days, because we sleep eight hours, we should, and we got to go to work six or seven hours, some nine, some twelve. But, but how often are we thinking about the eternal? How often do we think about our natural, I mean our spiritual assignment? How often and how, how, how much do you and I think about, my God, what matters the most? The essential things. We have to come off the battlefield of the world and learn how to have solitude and rest in God and give our attention to what really matters. Because can I tell you this? And I'm about, a lot of stuff that got you and I, I all over the place don't even matter, man. Like I said last Sunday, some of us is dealing with stuff we too old for, man. You, that stuff that you should have dealt with when you was 10 and 15 and 20. I'm serious, church. We too old for a lot of stuff. You and I, most of us got less days in front of us than we got behind us. Focus on that which is eternal. And when you focus on that which is eternal, my God, you, you guard against distractions. Mm, my God. C.S. Lewis pointed out, it's not, you, it's not usually bad or unbelieving thoughts. Just the ones that keep you from considering what is important. C.S. Lewis, I'm reading again, pointed out, it's not usually bad or, or unbelieving thoughts. It's just the ones that keep you from considering what is important. Because a lot of things that we think is important and a lot of things that we esteem should be down at the bottom. Offenses, we put it up here. We put offenses and being offended up here. And we, and we keep uh, 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 forgiveness down here. I'm going to leave it alone because I'm over time. Oh, I can go, oh my God. What, 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 what is you exalted? He said, if I be lifted up, are you lifted up it or are you lifted up him? Stuff that should be her, you got it up here. So now you got to reverse it. Oof. What's up here? It's supposed to be here. Doubt is up here and faith is way down here, but we Christians. Thank you, C.S. Lord. Things that interfere as I close, I'm hungry. I got a report due tomorrow. And the impact of the word fades from your memory. You never reject the word of God. You just get distracted. You never reject the word of God. You just get distracted. The parable of the sore, Pastor Ron. Many people have many excuses. Let me go home and see about mama. Let me go home and spend those time with my wife. Let me, let me go take care of my cattle. Uh, let me go tend to the farm. Uh, uh, let me go say goodbye to my sister. Let me go do this. All that good distractions. Yeah. Jesus said, come, follow me. And Jesus is saying the same thing tonight. Come, follow him. But we tend to tell God all of the stuff that we have to do like he don't know. <laughs> See, God is trying to call you and I out of the distractions. That's why he said, come, follow me. My goal tonight is just to make us see and really understand and see how serious distraction is to progress, to, to production, to potential. It's a major, major weapon going on for Christ's church that the enemy use. And you know what? He don't always use bad things. 
See, we'll tell ourselves, I got to get it because I got to take care of my family. But your family don't need you to have more money. They need you to be a better priest, prophet, and king of your home. Ooh, and what number of women are clapping? A few men. See, I need more money because that makes me feel good. But that's not what the family needs. So therefore, we justify and tell myself I got to get it. Then she died and she died. Death by distract, I'm distracted behind the cheese. She died, she died, Sharon died, D died, uh, Francesca, people dying because yeah. I got to get it. My God. And I feel good if I come home with a knot. But my wife is suffering because I lack leadership in the home. Death yeah. by distraction. So why did I do that? Because the Spirit of God just showed you and I, I knew that money is good, but don't let it become a distraction. Yes. The doctor said you rule it instead of it ruling you. Yes. You rule this. It's a mindset. Yeah. Everything comes down to a mindset. Yeah. Whoever get the mind, get the life, baby. Mm, mm, mm. I know I need to live holy. I know I've always battled with that sex demon. Mm-hmm. God know my heart. <laughs> yeah, yeah. God gonna forgive me. Mm. I just looking. Yeah. I ain't touching. They gonna pay me twenty five dollars to work this Saturday, but I told my son I was coming to the game. $25 extra on top of what I already made. So now I'm up in the $50 an hour. But I told my son, I'll be at the game. They ain't never offered me $25 extra, but when I give my word to my son, all of a sudden they say, I need you to come in on a Saturday for $25 extra. Dollars. Death by distraction. I am speaking from experience. Ain't nobody up here playing, y'all. Lord, have mercy on the body of Christ. What's distraction distracting you tonight? What have we put before God that should not be before God? What has our undivided loyalty more than God tonight? What is it? Selah. What am I giving my undivided attention to that's distracting me from giving undivided attention to my God? What is distracting me from spending time with my significant other at the level that I need to? Bitterness towards each other will keep you separate. Unforgiveness towards each other in a relationship will keep you separate. Always exalting failures and distractions and hang-ups and habits of each other. I'm talking to the married couples. Will keep you separated. Never willing to allow each other to teach each other will keep you divided. I'm speaking from this. Yes, yes, yes. Never willing to humble yourself as a man or a woman will keep you divided. Telling yourself as a single woman, it don't take all that. I ain't got no soul tie with him. I just, you know, these type of things are distraction. Giving ourselves excuses to feed the flesh. Justifying good things instead of purposeful things. Woo, thank you for all of the agreement. Tolerating his mess. What's dying? As I remind my young students, 
Don't ever pimp your gift and prostitute yourself. Protect your anointing. What do you need to bring in surrender? Yes, time is at hand. Some of us are distracted behind time. That's why we never respond. Because we feel like we ain't got nothing that we need to respond about. So we stay in our seat. We come to church to clear our mind and walk up out of here completely lost. Thinking that we in God's will. Because we didn't cuss nobody out and smoke no weed today. The devil is a lie. Oh, I'm being serious. What is your God today? Who is your God? What is your God? What do we need to bring that's killing us? God have need of thee tonight. God have need of thee tonight. Mm, thank you, Lord. What habits and hang-ups and addictions? As I told y'all, you're in the presence of God. The only one that got the power to heal you, to deliver you, to set you free, my God, from whatever it is that got you bound, my God, will you respond to that one? What has bitten you? What has hindered your momentum? What offense are you carrying? Clean up our souls, God. Mm. Bring us to repentance, God, as a people. Mm. What about all those vows we have made that we have never followed through on? Mm. What about those promises we have made to our children that we never followed through on? You should be down there so God can hear you. Some of us, my God, who, my God, has lied to our children, my God, and that's why there's a bridge. That's why there's a gap. That's why there's no honor. That's why there's no respect. You ought to come down and repent for that, my God, so God can restore your relationship with your children. Oh, my God, I know I'm in the house. Mm, mm, mm. My God. Some of us need to bring our mother's wounds to the altar. I know Mother's Day is coming up and it's one of the most uh, highly uh, attended services of a church. But also Mother's Day is very, very painful for a lot of people. Some of us in here even now that's at the altar and still sitting in our seat. You need to come down here on behalf of the pain, oh my God, and the division that you had between your, you and your mama. Some of y'all mothers has went on to glory and you still angry at her. You still bitter at her. Oh my God, God is talking to you. Deliverance has hit the church tonight. Will you come or will you be distracted and tell yourself, that ain't me. But if you allow God to search you, I guarantee you there's something that will make you come to this altar. Because we all got mess. On top of our yes. Oh Lord, help the people, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, let's pray, y'all. Come on, let's pray. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Oh Lord, it's me, God. It's me, God. Oh, don't let nothing else die. Don't let nothing else die because I'm distracted. Oh my God, don't let nothing else die because I'm distracted. Job said I made a covenant with my eyes and I might not sin against God. Oh my God, put a covenant over my eyes, Lord. Keep me from this lust, Lord. Keep me from this sexual demons in the church, Father God. Don't let me be a whoremonger in the church, Father God. Break me a loose from fornication, Father God. Oh, it's a distraction, God. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you.